Morning guys and a very warm welcome to the channel. Um, for those of you who have recently subscribed to us, a uh, huge thank you from us. I'm Bob. And I'm Nikki. And today, look at this. Look at this amazing weather. Absolutely incredible weather. So, it's December and it's not that warm, albeit we've just had to clear a bit of frost off, but we're going to go out and about. We fancy a trip over to Skoma, I think, see if there are any seals there. Uh, and what we also thought we'd do in this episode, is we've had a few questions come through, was give you a bit more of an in-depth look at the boat um, and some of the features of the um, Merry Fisher 895 offshore um, to answer a few of your questions. Um, so come with us, enjoy an incredible December day, and we'll see you out on the water shortly. Bye. So first and foremost, we drop the uh, engines uh, back down so we can uh, move the seating back. So we'll get the uh, the bench seat slid back. It fits in with uh, three bolts, one down in the corner of the seat there. And then uh, these bolts down on the side, the whole thing slides back on its runners. And then uh, drop these padlocks back in, or bolts back in I should say. Thank up. So with the ignition on, um, it's uh, just a single press and a single press of that one, and there you can hear them both firing up. Both telltales running. They're ready to go, so almost time to untie. Also out trying to capture some pictures. So the uh, sunbed part just has this uh, extra bar that just slots in here. Um, dead easy, lightweight aluminium, so really easy to uh, set up. And then it has this um, cradle which opens out and provides what is in effect the uh, mattress base, if you like, for the uh, for the extra deck. So let's get that in place. There it is in place and um, ready now for the two last cushions. And so that's the, uh, the sort of rear sunbed out and all put together. All that remains of course to be done <laughs> is for Nikki to come and test it. <laughs> How's that? Oh, super yummy comfy. Yeah, it's much bigger than the last one isn't it? It is, yeah, definitely um, the 795, the one we had before. Um, this one just gives a bit more, as well as a little bit more cockpit space at the back, therefore a bit more length in the, uh, in the sun mattress here. And uh, just a great space, absolutely great space to chill out. And in the cockpit area, we've got um, three 
storage areas underneath the seat and I'll just show you whilst we've got the cushions off plenty of room there we've uh, stored um, our rescue uh, rope um, and some oars for our dinghy and this one's got all our cleaning stuff again there's plenty of space in there and in this one we keep some of our ropes and bits and pieces there's an additional one here which is handy as well which stays dry we've got some more ropes and bits and pieces in there as well the uh, two points here are your different positions for the table obviously if the bench seat is uh, slid forward it's in its fully fully back position at the moment but if it's slid forward then um, use the right hand of the two there which still allows you to use the table if you want it uh, as you saw earlier though we like using this uh, sun deck area that fits into that square part there and then finally out the back here got um, a large sort of locker area up on that gas strut here uh, and a really good storage space the ladder down into it there fenders 3d dinghy um, the outboard motor torpedo motor there bit of fishing kit you name it uh, plenty of room for it all and of course it's lockable which is brilliant So we're down in the hole now, down the ladder, and uh, they've hidden up under here, that's the uh, Wabasto central heating, uh, air vented, that runs off diesel, and uh, there's the exhaust pipe running out here, the insulation of the exhaust pipe running out, venting out through the side of the boat, and just along here, got the uh, cable run for the diesel tank itself, which, uh, which is under this uh, under this storage here, and then also um, now on this uh, eight nine five, the fuel filters were uh, behind this panel here, but um, Daniel at uh, BHG noticed that they had modified the design slightly of the fuel tank itself, which made accessing the fuel filters um, extremely difficult unless you had extremely thin arms and were a contortionist. So. He suggested that uh, we just put them the other side, um, which we've done, which we agreed to because it makes life much easier, A, to check whether there's any uh, water ingress into the fuel, and then uh, of course B, if there is any water ingress, um, to very quickly deal with it. And the uh, red, little red washer there, uh, indicates as it floats upwards, um, if there's any water in the fuel. So and under that panel then, um, 25 litre diesel tank, which follows that line obviously up to the, uh, up to the, up to the heater, 25 litre tank, um, and then back behind it there in the depths of the rear of the craft is the uh, second bilge, uh, automatic bilge with a sensor on it. And then just down there in the depths of the hold you've got a small gauge there which is the diesel level for the uh, for the heating and then um, over the other side here slides cover back and uh, this is where the uh, batteries are obviously stored the two house batteries and the engine battery all coming through to the rear here and just on the side here they supply a little light um, which is dead handy. If we're mooching around down here, trying to get our stuff in and out. And the uh, gas bottle in the 895 is just on the side here. So we'll just turn that on. Definitely need a cup of today. Now the canopy obviously has the three roll up sides, uh, and then it's just secured by this uh, or just helped secured by this uh, strap down onto the seat there and relies on these uh, stainless steel rods that just keep the whole canopy uh, in position. A good sturdy bit of kit stands up to any gales and wind that we've had so far and, uh, and a good strong product. As you come into the saloon area got the uh, sliding doors, got the uh, battery cutoffs 
at the back here uh, to which we added a 12 volt for the uh, inflatable dinghy and then uh, just to the right of the uh, cutoffs you've got the manual bilge pump here um, should the um, electric ones fail and then one of the options you get with the 895 is uh, obviously to have the flooring floors carpeted um, which we chose to do through to the um, cabins there the, the uh, seat up here as some of you know that knows your nose obviously lifts back and uh, gives you a good view out the front when you're on the move what you see or like what you seal one or the other The galley area is uh, just a lift up of this cover, um, two burners on the 895 uh, and a good kettle storage space of course. Tap, lift up tap there which hinges up and down, hot and cold water, it's got the uh, switch there which um, allows you to easily switch the hot water heater on or off. Um, it only takes about 20 minutes to heat up, switched it on just as we arrived at the boat, heats up on shore power only. Um, so once we're out and about, then we just uh, have to survive, as it were, on the 25 litres in the uh, hot water tank. And then uh, plenty of storage underneath, big slide out, full width drawer. And then a uh, little cupboard down below there for a few more bits and pieces. A good size fridge, 65 litre fridge. And then there's some uh, additional storage sliding out drawer there. Again the um, under the seating here this uh, table here can uh, drop down fit into these little ledges here uh, and then it becomes what is in effect an additional berth um, not certainly not a full double size um, but nonetheless a good uh, comfortable sleeping area very comfortable sleeping area for one person uh, up on the top here. At the uh, front of the saloon area you've got these two um, large plexiglass areas which allow uh, plenty of light down through to the cabins which is very nice, uh, particularly in the daylight. Out the front there, at the uh, bow of the boat, um, they've got the cushion arrangement that allows uh, you to sit out the front, sort of make it into a sun deck type thing, together with uh, a piece that uh, lifts up and uh, makes a really nice two or three person bench seat across the front there. And I think somewhere we've probably got a photo of it, which we'll show you, um, of that setup. The uh, helm layout with the fly-by-wire controls for the twin Yamaha 200s at the back. The uh, 6YC Yamaha control 
and then the chart plotter we opted for the uh, 8410 so the GPS map Garmin product um, and then the 6YC can also be wired in to the uh, main chart plotter as well so that gives you the engine display and readout and information uh, on the larger screen as well if you want it. Further down a fusion radio um, and four speakers two at the back and then out in the cockpit area two at the back here as well with an option and included um, some different colour covers some black covers for the speaker outlets down at the bottom along the bottom you've got your zip wakes controls at the moment in fully auto got the um, side power bow thruster controls there the ignition itself push button start on uh, port and starboard engines and then the switch panels along the base here be uh, the bilge pumps here uh, and then the water pump the electrics anchor and some lighting and some of the windscreen washers and windscreen wiper controls there up at the top just that small switch there that controls the um, spotlight that's mounted on the roof of the boat um, and again you've got uh, the on off and then a directional control left down up and right the uh, 895 has uh, two sunroofs uh, and they also have um, a sort of fly screen type cover that pulls across if they're open and this side uh, also additional sort of um, light stopping cover if you want it and then a very simple operation is just to slide down and back and there you see the spotlight at the front there uh, the controls for which were just inside here and then the um, Garmin VHF radio and uh, currently on channel 8 so what we do is go into uh, watch there and then have it on try watch which means we can listen out to uh, channel 8 which is just a less sort of back-to-back -back type channel and then uh, 16 the obviously the emergency channel and channel 12 which is the Milford Haven Port Authority uh, channel for all uh, boat movement or bigger boat movement uh, in the Haven so good to listen to all three and the seat itself, the helm seat itself, got this hinged piece on the front there for uh, for uh, when you sat down or once up allows uh, allows you to stand and lean. And the thing I love about this boat is the uh, is the side door. It's so handy for getting out and sorting out um, the anchor, etc., etc. Uh, makes it very easy to climb up and pop back in again. And of course in the summer it's great fresh air coming in. And just at the bottom of the steps with its own door um, is the middle cabin in effect. Um, it's got its own small storage cupboard. Um, it's got uh, a small opening window there. Um, it's got an additional bit of lighting here with its own separate switch and obviously a main switch there for the main lighting. Uh, around to the berth itself uh, we've got young Nikki. Hello. Yes and the uh, the sleeping area here the cabin space is uh, is really quite generous for two people. Um, it, yes it's about so it's overall it's about 1.93 meters from the back there up to the front here and it's about 1.4 meters wide uh, give or take a few mil. So, in other words, a very good, uh, just slightly bigger than standard double size berth. Yes, and it, it feels very comfortable, so ideal for, for two adults. Um, here we've got uh, warm air streaming through uh, from our diesel heater, which is very pleasant. We've got some great storage space here for your luggage and um, a reading light just in the corner, touch control. So, all in all, um, it's you know very cozy very comfortable ideal for um, sleeping over yeah and just obviously as you go further down the berth there slightly less headroom um, but not an issue really and underneath as uh, as I think I mentioned earlier underneath the uh, mattress here you've got 
the wooden hatch which gives you access to the cold water tank 160 litre tank cold water uh, right underneath so in the uh, mid berth behind this hatch uh, here a couple of catches drop the hatch down and then that gives us access to um, in the top there you've got the uh, battery chargers onboard battery chargers then the um, hot water supply for the sink and the shower um, black water clear out and obviously the blue tank at the back the blue green tank at the back that's uh, that's the black water tank itself and then uh, on the side there got the uh, cold water pump system which connects uh, back underneath uh, to the mid berth uh, bed itself and underneath is the uh, 160 litre cold water supply tank a good size heads that uh, allow standing room uh, it also allows a standing shower as well shower fitting at the top here fitted up high and this mixer tap here in the heads just pulls out from there and goes all the way up to be attached to that uh, shower point up there in the floor and the plug in the floor there allows uh, drainage down into the uh, lower part of the boat where the shower pump is or the water pump is to pump out the side of the boat um, and similarly here just on the side there is the switch that controls that uh, shower pump at the back here as well uh, in effect this panel here is actually under the helm station so if you release these catches here and then this uh, just press this little button here it allows you access to a right mixture of goodies um, most of the main fuses of the boat on the back of this door together with um, obviously loads of the uh, innards and workings um, of the chart plotter 6YC radio system you name it it comes through here uh, covering under the sink uh, toilet roll holder that they supply fitted on the back of the door there and some access into um, into some of the pipe work and um, allowing maintenance on the boat uh, the door itself obviously because it's a stand-up shower in here that's got a gasket all the way around it and a lip there um, to ensure that the water stays in here uh, mirror fit towel rail mirror all supplied uh, as part of the uh, part of the boat and a great view so the midpoint bilge is under the carpet just near the toilet of the 895 and then inside we've got the shower pump uh, windscreen washer bottle refill and then round the back here the uh, build all neatly tucked away and then the door to uh, the main berth in the daytime in the main cabin you can see that that uh, those plexiglass light areas allow in plenty of uh, plenty of natural daylight hatch at the top there additionally and then you've got these long windows at the sides uh, which give you a fantastic view out low down to the water so on the move as well which I'll try and get a shot for you later when you're on the move it's almost like you're in the water itself lovely views out and at the moment this very pleasant hot air vent with the Wabasto heater running keeping us nice and warm on this December day um, additional cupboard storage Small area we keep some um, life vests and other bits and bobs. Three pin power in here, and then there's little steps up to the side of um, to the side of the bed at each side here. Um, there's some storage area down here as well, all the way along here where the curtains go on both sides. So six covers in total, and lighting wise. There's lighting uh, up here, which you, yeah, you can just about see it in this light. Um, so lighting up there, which comes on, lighting, strip lighting under there, which you can just about pick up as well. Yeah, under there, 
and then there are the individual uh, lights there with tiny little switches that one in the corner there on both sides which provide um, when the main lights are off which can give you like a to, so reading light on each side of there and then back round to look up the steps back towards the rear of the boat where Nicky is hiding So there's also uh, more storage under the um, under the bed in the main cabin, um, which has a couple of different ways in. One is um, you can come in through the door there, um, or the other way is the whole this section of the bed just lifts up, which um, more storage, uh, good storage space, gas struts, so dead easy to lift up and down, and these. Um, these bits here are where the uh, actual main body of the bed can slide forward to create a bit of extra space with an infill cushion for those that are um, taller, so it gives you a larger, or longer I should say, a longer double bed. So once all the sun mattress bits are out, um, we've got another hatch, which unsurprisingly leads to uh, more goodies. Um, uh, here we've got the bow thruster. Side Power is the brand or the make of the bow thruster there, and uh, it's ba its own battery as well up the front here. Just hear the water lapping against the side. We're down in the depths of the boat. Pick that one back down, and then uh, at the top end of the bed where the pillows were. Um, you know, I've had a little mirror there, and this is also a removable part of the mattress, if you like, um, which drag out, and yet another cover here. So a bit of a void here. And then once the lid's off, and this white cover's back, then um, here we've got the uh, reset for the bow thruster and uh, some other bits of the uh, onboard charging system. On the starboard side of the boat, um, we've got the fuel filler there, second one up is your black water extract if required, and then right at the front there, at the end of the um, teak decking, is the uh, fresh water inlet. Up on top here, um, there is a stand-up paddleboard rack, uh, which is a good sturdy bit of kit actually. And then on up to the uh, front of the boat, that area that I talked about for uh, the sun deck, uh, and this uh, this hinged piece here, which lifts up and gives you that two or three three person um, bench seat at the front. Uh, the anchor locker is just a straightforward gas strut. And then storage for, for our boat hook and then um, your chain and uh, rope for the anchor together with the remote control and the uh, manual manual windlass handle uh, if required. This can be controlled obviously from here uh, the anchor or indeed there's the um, switch at the helm which allows you to raise and lower the anchor as well. back into Nayland ahead uh, there after 
a superb December day. Only about five or six degrees today, but we're bit lovely sun over there in the distance. Still a tiny bit of warmth coming from it. Seals, a picnic, bit of sun, fresh frosty morning, back into Nayland. What more could you want of a December day to take you away from the dreaded 2020 Lurgy? And Nikki just bringing us into the berth. Bit of reversing, bit of shunting. Beauty of the twin engines is the uh, really good slow speed control you get. Nikki's got one uh, starboard engine in forward there, port engine in reverse. And it's just almost turning on a sixpence here at the back. Obviously turns from the midpoint of the boat. But gives you uh, amazing manoeuvrability. Um, in fact easier than the 795 that we came from with its single uh, 200 Honda. So having pivoted the boat on the midpoint using the um, starboard and port engines. So you not move the engines at all, zero steering on the engines, just all done on the uh, starboard and port, forward and reverse, which allows you to move the boat sideways to the left and right uh, with use of the uh, side power bow thruster as well. Great manoeuvrability. Bring it in nice and gently. <coughs> Fabulous. And there, um, there you see the canopy in the uh, completely down position, clips into all the poppers around the side here, um, zips in each corner. Got a zippable flap there which just allows the engine's uh, room to uh, tilt up there. The um, swim ladder at the back there and the rail. And then those are the two, the two Yam 200s at their uh, fullest extent lifted. Just touching the water there. We're running about 75-80% fuel so We've got a fair weight of fuel towards the rear of the boat, so certainly uh, this morning before we fueled up we were running about 20-30% and they were clear of the water. Uh, for those of you that uh, mentioned that or that asked that question, so 80 um, odd percent fuel just touching the bottom, but uh, just touching the water I should say, but not, uh, not a huge issue and easy to clean off. Draw power cable there, running in, crafty bit of elastic to keep it out of the water, and the canopy down on the side. Lovely evening, 20 past four, sun well and truly down, disappearing, temperature dropping. But still a very calm, very still evening. And here she is at night. You've got um, some blue lighting there recessed in the cockpit area. At the side of the boat there where the steps go up to the front, you've got some additional blue lights there recessed into the uh, steps. Oh, 
and then uh, as you come onto the boat and into the cabin areas some really nice lighting you know, if you're down here in the evenings or in the dark recessed LED strip lighting along the bottom of the units there and then down through to the heads area to the mid cabin berth and to the main berth itself a lot of recessed strip lighting they've added to the 895 together with reading lights make it a really nice uh, and a really nice space to spend the evening on well uh, that was a bonus of course I uh, hope uh, the look around the boat has been of use to uh, those of you who had asked us one or two questions um, but uh, we're especially pleased as well of course that you could share uh, some of the amazing wildlife here as well out at Skoma with our uh, guests for lunch the uh, two young seals that came to join us so um, if you've enjoyed the film of course do give us a like please and of course subscribe to the channel it doesn't cost you a penny thank you once again uh, for watching the film and so for the moment it's uh, goodbye from me and goodbye from me cheers guys Thank you.